Well, I think he said that uh, they have destroyed more uh, weapons than they did uh, during right, the war. Right. That is, uh, that's correct. I uh, do not disagree with him. But when we speak about this crisis, I think his government is responsible for that crisis. And if he wants to avoid a crisis and return to the normalcy, uh, they should not uh, stand against the legitimate concerns and grievances of Iraq, which were uh, presented to the members of the Security Council through the Secretary General of the United Nations. We have serious concerns, we have serious grievances, we have legitimate requests. First of all of those requests is the lifting of sanctions. The sanctions have been imposed since 1990. They have gone on for seven years or more, and there is no end to in prospect for lifting the sanctions. Let me interrupt you. That, uh, Mr. Rose, we have our reasons, our good reasons for that. The sanctions have uh, continued for six and a half years without any prospect of lifting them because the technical procedure of lifting the sanctions should uh, be uh, as follows. The Special Commission reporting to the Security Council that it has finished its job and dismantling and uh, dismantling Iraq's uh, uh, prohibited weapons. The Special Commission has been working, as the President has said, for six and a half years. Until now, it says that I have not finished my job. The reason behind that is that the Special Commission is dominated by the Americans. But the American government does not want to lift the sanctions, and they implement their government's position. Dominate in what way? Dominated in... Not in, in terms of numbers. In terms of numbers, in terms of the percentage. of The percentage is the highest one among all other nationalities. Throughout six and a half years, the percentage of the American presence in, this, in the Special Commission has been more than 20 percent. This year, 1997, it's 32 percent. Last year, 1996, it was 44%. And they dominate the most important and sensitive positions in the, in the Special Commission. They carry out the most sensitive and important activities of UNSCOM inside Iraq. So UNSCOM is the United States. This argument. The Security Council. There is unanimity on what matter? On the matter of the American presence and the American role in the Special but Commission. Not, there is not. No, there is no, no useful no, function no, Mr. served Charlie, by the monitor. No, no. You have to be precise on that. The Security Council unanimously didn't accept expelling the Americans from UNSCO. But they do realize, they do realize that the Americans have a quite an extraordinary role in this uh, in the work of UNSCOM and their role is, uh, is not equal to the role of the others. And this is not fully endorsed. There are members in the Council who acknowledge this fact and they are uneasy about it. Who are they? I'm not going to tell names. Because they're not stepping forward to say that. No, None they are saying them. that, in the, deliberations, say that. In the deliberations of the Security Council and the deliberations between me and them and in the discussions among members not in the, in the official meetings of the Security Council in the open, but they are. This is a very important issue which is being discussed, be, being thought of uh, before and in this uh, crisis. You no, do I that. didn't say that we Did will shut down. We didn't say that. On the contrary, we said that we will continue cooperating with UNSCOM. If the Americans leave and the others stay in Baghdad, then we will fully cooperate with them to conduct, to perform their, their duties and their activities. It's Mr. Butler who decided to withdraw the others. But I'm just saying, if they all are withdrawn, will you shut down what remains of the UN monitoring? No. So you're not threatening to do that? No, no. I didn't say that. What will you do if all of the UN Nothing. inspectors are withdrawn? N all of them? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing. There isn't any program of weapons 
And not those, nerve gas, not anything. Not anything, not anything. And those who tell the contrary are liars, especially those who are in ANSCOM, so, because so they know exactly, they know exactly that we don't have any more, any more, any instruments, any equipment, any precursors that could produce such weapons. And first, any, first. And any intent to produce no such intent, weapons. No intent to do it. They know that very well. They know that Why very well. Why do you think Secondly, secondly, if you allow me to elaborate on that. Secondly, we ask ANSCOM to stay. There are six individuals now of American nationality. The others could stay and check if we are doing that or not. Third, we are not seeking division between the five permanent members. We are not seeking that. That's not our game. We are not a superpower to play that game. But, but, he, we but want you would like to, to see that happen because you would like to engage with the Russians like, and you would like would to like, engage with the French. And We would like every member in the Security Council, every nation in this world, to understand our concerns and grievances, whether they are permanent members, non-permanent members, people outside the Security Council, we would like everybody, every individual, to understand that enough is enough. Enough is enough. For six and a half years, the ANSCOM has been doing the job of disarmament. It strongly tells the Security Council that it hasn't finished its job, and that means more deaths, more grievances, more hardships, more ordeal to the Iraqi people. This has to stop. This policy of actually genocide has to stop any... So your own well, there's a lot of fabrications in this world, and many fabrications have been but done against Iraq. And there are no uh, impartial witnesses who have reported. This is part of the, part of the uh, campaign against Iraq, which was used to, to s s justify the unjust war against Iraq that was waged in 1991. It's being used as a justification for the present policies against Iraq. If you come to Baghdad, come to Baghdad and we will take you to the Kurdish area and you can see the facts yourself. Well, they are responsible because as long as they are dominating ANSCOM, they are not going to tell the truth to the Security Council. What we ask but if, is that let us have a balanced representation of all members of the Security Council, of all permanent members. We said, let us have an ANSCOM where the French, the Russians, the Chinese, as well as the Americans and the British have an equal footing. Why should the Americans take all the important positions? Why they should uh, dominate the activities of ANSCOM? This is a UN agency. This is a UN organ. It's not a United, States, United organ. States That's the fact. But, we have but, facts and figures. Facts and figures. But why wouldn't the members of the inspection team, if that argument was correct? Well, the other members in the Security Council have said and have mentioned that the Americans are dominating ANSCOM and they are uneasy about it. If they disagree with us on one point, that they do not endorse our decision to expel the Americans at this moment, they do agree with us to a certain extent that, yes, your argument that the Americans are dominating uh, ANSCOM is true, because it's a fact. You have nothing to we be afraid nothing of from the Americans or anyone else. We have nothing Let to them hide. Come they have they done that. It, but that's not they the have testimony done that, of... But they have not reported faithfully, truthfully to the Security Council. And Mr. Butler is a liar if he says otherwise. I don't call names, Who but Who were you calling a liar, correct. though? You just said somebody was a liar. I'm not mentioning names, you see, but generally ANSCOM ANSCOM, those who dominate ANSCOM, they lie to the world, they lie to the Security Council. Their lies have not been verified by the Security Council in a, in a proper manner. They have use not these, been verified? Yes. They have been used, those lies have been used as an excuse to, to keep the sanctions. Do you think I that invited, let me elaborate on that, I invited in two letters sent to the Security Council experts who represent five permanent members to come and check those fabrications. You should remember that last year, this time, Mr. Akios was telling the world that Iraq is concealing an operational missile force. Isn't mentioned now? The answer is no. Why? Because 
through a process of technical means and ways, through a process of laboratory analysis, which started in April this year till August, it was shown that the Iraqi statement about the non-existence of an operational missile force is correct. And that is reported in the last report of the executive chairman. So the lies which were floating last year, similar to the lies which are being floated this year about CW and BW, the first lie has been exposed as untrue, not through inspections, not through Sherlock Holmes means, but through the technical and scientific examination of those lies. Now, you can easily reach the conclusion whether there is or there isn't prohibited weapons, because there are scientific and technical means to verify that. But what but they are you're using, not allowing them to do that. We are allowing them this year, in, in, since, since April till October, 700 activities of inspections took place in Iraq. But you are misinformed. You are misinformed. You are making generalities. 700 activities of inspections, of verifications, of interviews took place in the, in the last six months. Have there were only six incidents, less than 100 percent, when those inspectors were not allowed. They came to our sovereign and presidential sites, and we would not allow an American uh, and I spy. I understand that issue. I cannot allow an American spy to enter into the presidential palace which is a target of American aggression to assassinate Saddam Hussein. Do you, do you accept that? I do. That's would a valid accept, issue. Yes, that's a valid issue. That, that's a, a valid issue. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Cold War, would you accept a KGB spy to, to enter the White House and Absolutely the residence not. of the or president go, of the United States? Or to go to the CIA. States you wouldn't to, accept him. To update you, uh, his information to kill your president? You cannot accept that. They have been doing 700 activities inside the country. They have inspected and visited hundreds of units of military units, hundreds of factories, hundreds of warehouses, hundreds of universities, schools, uh, monasteries, churches, right, etc., etc. Et and that's not enough. Let me repeat what you're saying. Let me truth. hear what you're saying. You're saying we've allowed you to expect a lot of stuff to find out as much as you want to find, but we're not going to let you go to where our national security apparatus that's is. That's we're not going to let you invade what is that's legitimate. Our point. State that's our point. Secret. Read my and letters to the Security right. Council. That's my point. Some will say you lost the war. You lost the war, and you don't dictate the terms. We went through a war, and the war stopped. We did not lose a war. It and mercifully we had, stopped for you. It stopped. You're it stopped. It stopped. We did not on. request I mean, that, uh, Mr. Bush to stop it. He decided to stop it. Out that's of his compassion, decision. because it compassion, who killed. The children who destroyed the electrical stations. It was a Turkey stations. shoot along the, tr along the roads back to Baghdad, and you know that. I mean, they called that war in, within 24 hours because... Was it a courageous act, you see, to kill withdrawing forces? He killed the, our forces when they were withdrawing was from Was it Kuwait. courageous to do what...